good, good time. So give it up for Elder Denise and all her husbands. Two, 
You know that I were that you were Gentiles carried away to these dumb idols, however you were led. Therefore, I make known to you that no one speaking by my Spirit of God calls Jesus accursed. And no one can say that Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Yeah. There are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. There are differences of ministries, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of activities, but it is the same God who works all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to each one for the profit of all. For to one is given the word of wisdom through yep. the Spirit, yep. to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another gifts of, of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, yeah. to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But one and the same Spirit works all these things, <laughs> distributing to each one individually as he wills. For as the body is one, has many members, but all the members of that one, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. For by one Spirit we were all baptized into one body, whether Jews or Greeks, whether slaves or free, and have all been made to drink into one Spirit. 14. For in fact... The body is not one member, but many. Amen, Lord, and a blessing to the hearing and the yeah. reading of your word. So in understanding that there's many members in the body, and it's Jesus' prerogative to give whomever gives, he chooses to whomever he chooses to give them. Yeah. So before we can understand that, we need to understand the gift of Jesus, mm. this gift. Mm. The gift of Jesus is a gift that does something as well. So we went over all the nine manifestations of the gift, but Jesus Christ was the gift that God has given us, okay? So let's say that this is the gift, hallelujah, of Jesus. So when God gave us this gift, he gave us salvation. Yeah. So salvation has everything wrapped in it. Mm -hmm. Only thing we have to do is receive the gift. Right. So once we receive the gift, according to the scriptures, we're saved. Amen? Right. Amen. So right. once we get saved, is that the end? No. no. For no. some people it is. Because <laughs> some people will get this gift, wow. hold on to this gift, Ooh. and never unwrap it. Wow. You'll never wow. unwrap the gift to find wow. out what's on the inside of the gift. Yeah. So I got my salvation. I am going to heaven, but I am living a defeated life. Yeah. Yeah. I'm living a yeah. defeated life. I'm going through hell and high water every oh, day. Yeah. Things is going around. I'm touchy, I'm moody. Every time I turn around, something is getting on my nerve, and I'm repenting more than I'm praising God. Wow. Yeah. Go ahead. That's a defeated life. Come on. God the Father did not give us his son Jesus Christ to live a defeated life. So when we get this gift, it is our responsibility. Say our responsibility. Our responsibility. It's our responsibility to unwrap the gift and receive everything. Everything. Not some of the stuff. Yeah. Receive everything uh -huh. that is on the inside of the gift. The choice is yours. Yeah. You can take the gift. Right. I'm going to heaven because I'm saved. And that's true according to the scriptures. Correct. But God didn't just die for you to go to heaven. He died for Come you to on. live an abundant yes. life. Hallelujah. Full to the overflow. So there's nothing missing and nothing broken yes. in your life. That's what he died for. Not just for you to go to heaven. Right. Amen. Right. So I want y'all to look at this gift uh -huh. while I teach this word. Amen. All right. And make a decision what you're going to do with that gift. Right. Are you just going to hold on to it? And walk Teach in the it. salvation that God has given you in the gift of Jesus Christ? Or are you going to take the time to unwrap the gift and see what's on the inside? Amen. 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 So today I came to talk about and break generational curses. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Clap your hands because Jesus ah. wants to break the hallelujah generational curses yeah. in Lord. this house today. Yeah. Amen. Amen. So whoever came in this house, when you leave, you will not. I decree and declare, you will not be the same. Because every 
every generational curse has been broken today. Amen. And when you talk about generational curses, what you need to understand yeah. that it's passed down from generation to generation. Yeah. Yeah. It's really not even about you. It's in your blood. Yeah. Okay. So if your mama got married, I mean, had a baby out of wedlock, and then your auntie had a baby out of wedlock, and then you had a baby out of wedlock, then your daughter had a baby out of wedlock. Wow. Nine times out of ten, that's a generational curse. Amen. If great great granddaddy was an alcoholic, and then daddy was an alcoholic, and your brother was an alcoholic, now your nephew an alcoholic, right. that's a generation yeah. curse. Yeah. So we need to recognize My if, if daddy was a rolling stone, Papa was a rolling stone. <laughs> well, when he laid his hat, was his home. And when he died, oh, he left us alone. <laughs> daddy was a rolling stone, and your brother is a rolling stone. And your nephews is rolling stones. Come on. Nine times out of ten, that's a what? Generational a generational curse. curse. Yeah. So what we have to do is understand what generational curses is, denounce them, yeah. then walk yeah. in the generational blessings that God said we can have. There you go. God said we can have them. If it's broken as true, we can walk in the blessings that God has set aside for us. Amen. Amen. So the gift the Father gave us in John. That he gave his only begotten son. So that's the gift. That's the ultimate gift that God could give us right. with Jesus Christ, his only begotten son. So y'all know I, I, I got a business man, so I think in business, right? So I worked work this out in business. So Jesus' mission statement was 1 John bar, 1 John 3, 7 through 9. New King James Version. Okay. 1 John 3, 7 through 9. So in 1 John 3, 7 through 9, that's Jesus' mission statement. When I'm working with people in business, I always tell them you want to have your mission statement yeah. and you want to have your vision statement. Yeah. Your mission statement is what you going to do. Yeah. Okay? Your vision statement is how you going to do it. Yeah. Say mission statement. Mission statement. What I'm going to do. What I'm going to do. Vision statement. Vision statement. How I'm going to do it. How I'm going to do it. So this is Jesus' mission statement. It's 1 John 3, 7 through 9. Ready, Bar? Yes. Read. Little children. Let no one be deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who sins is of the devil, for the devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested, that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whoever has been born of God does not sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin, wow. because he has not but been born of God. Because he has been born of God. So the mission statement, the takeaway from this verse is for this purpose. For what? This purpose, the Son of God was made manifest. Yeah. So it says for this purpose, the Son of God was born. For this purpose, Jesus came to the earth. For this purpose, Jesus came that you might have life and have it abundantly. Amen? Amen. Right. Right. That he may destroy the works of the devil. Right. So in my sanctified imagination, I translate it into that. We say that he came to break generational curses. Okay. All right? Because right. generational curses is the works of the devil. So Jesus came to break generational curses. That's what the scripture says. Amen? Amen. So now his vision statement is how he's going to do it. The vision statement is John 10 and 10. It All says, right. the thief comes... That he to steal, kill, and destroy. Jesus said, I come that you may have life and have it more abundant. Uh -huh. So that is to release generational process. Are we all in agreement? Uh -huh. Amen. All right. So the gifts that we have in Jesus Christ is not about you. The gift is about the kingdom. So Jesus wants to be made manifest in your life so you can show his glory right. so that you will attract yep. people so we can all point them to the kingdom. Amen? Amen. So, but if I don't take the time to unwrap the gifts and find out what's on the inside, I will never be able to get the benefits of the gift. Right. right. I need y'all to get that. So if you buy a cell phone and you never charge it up, you're not going to be able to use a cell phone, right? Right. At all. If you buy an electronic device and you never plug it in, you're never going to be able to use that electronic That's device. That's good. Right? So if you got the gift of Jesus right. and you never unwrap it, wow. and find out what's on the inside, 
Wow. You never get the benefits that he died for you to have. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. First, you have to receive the gift. Okay? Because the scripture says that he stands at the door and he does what? Now. He knocks. And then once you answer the door, right. you can receive the gift of Jesus Christ. Right. Now sometimes Jesus is standing at your heart and he's knocking and you're doing everything else. Cool. But paying attention to that knock on the door. Amen? So then you have to make a decision. What are you going to do? Am I going to unwrap this gift? of Jesus Christ and get to know it in a way that God can be made manifest in my life, that I can walk in this victory that he said I can have. Amen? So once we receive it, old cycles will go away. That means generational curses. Right. And then new cycles will come into place. That is generational blessings. Amen? Yeah. So let's find out about that. Go to Joshua 24 and 14. Joshua 24 and 14. So as we go through this, Joshua was talking about fearing the Lord and what that looks like. Okay. Joshua was talking about fearing the Lord and what that looks like. And in the midst of him talking about that, he made a statement that was very, very profound. Very profound. So is everybody there? Joshua 24, 14 and 15. Now therefore, fear the Lord. Serve him sincerely and in truth. But always the God which your father served on the other side of the river and in, in Egypt. Serve the Lord. And if it seems evil to you to serve the Lord, choose yourself this day whom you will serve. Whether the gods of your father serve or whether the other side of the river or the gods of the Amorite and the lands who, and where you dwell. But as for me yep. and my house, we will serve the Lord. I need everybody to say that. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Say it one more time. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Now, hold on, one more again. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So the scriptures is telling you that you have a choice. So you can choose this day whom you will serve. Just you can choose this day whom you will serve. And they're telling you that you should choose to serve the Lord. Because if you choose to serve the Lord, there's benefits. Hallelujah. Yeah. There's benefits in serving Jesus. So as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. So when you talk about me and my house, that means my family. Yeah. Say my family. My family. And my generation. And my generation. So as for me yeah. and my family, yeah. and me and my generation, yeah. we gon' serve the Lord. Yeah. So once you make a decision that that's what you're going to do, you need to be avid about it, amen? So it, it shouldn't be a cho choice. What you going to do today? Are we going to church today? That's a given. That's a given. That's a given, amen? That's not even nothing, a question that should be asked. So when you talk about, as for me in my house, we're talking about generations, generations to come. That reminds me of when I first started dating Pastor Gray. Um, he, we was going to church together because I met him at church. So then uh, one Sunday he called me and he was like, uh, uh, no, he called me Saturday. He was like, what time are you going to pick you up for church? I said, I'm not going. He's like, what you mean you ain't going? I said, I don't go to church every Sunday. I said, I go to church at least three Sundays a month, but on a minimum two. And he was like, no, you going to church. And he goes, I'm not going. I told you I ain't going. Now I get TJ ready and TJ can go to church with you, but I'm not going to church. He was like, okay. So then he called that morning again. I said, I told you I wasn't going to church. So a rude awakening for him when we first started ministry was people don't come to church every Sunday. Yeah. So I told him that. I said, people don't come to church every Sunday. He was like, yes, they do. So then after people was not coming to church every Sunday, I'm like, okay, you see now, people don't go to church every Sunday. So then after that, you know, once we got married, he said, as for me and my house, house we're going to serve the Lord. All right? So then I start coming to church. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. <laughs> Sunday. <laughs> so when you make a decree and a declare, what Joshua was doing was declaring in the spirit yeah. that as for him and his house, they were going to serve the Lord. Amen? Right. And when we decree and declare something, the Bible right. tells us whatever we loose uh -huh. um, on earth will be uh -huh. loose in heaven. heaven. And yeah. whatever we bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And how do we loose and how do we bind? 
with our mouth. mouth. With our mouth, with the words that we say. Yeah. So we say yes stuff that we really don't want, and then we get this stuff that we really don't want. Why? Wow. Because we keep we saying, saying it. Wow. Right. Right. We keep Break saying it. it. Yeah. So we gotta say what we want, not what it is. Yeah. Say what you want it to be, not what it is. You already know what it is. God already know what it is. So you gotta say what you want it to be. Yeah. That's binding and loose, and that's how we receive the things that God has in store for us. Amen. Amen. So as we do this and we bind and we lose, that's how we get ready to unwrap the gift that Jesus has for us. Let's go to 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. 2 Peter 1, 2 through 4. It starts off like this. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God, of Jesus our Lord. As his divine power has given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. Through the knowledge of him who is called by glory and virtue, by which has been given an exceedingly great precious promise, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the world through lust. So through the first thing it says that be multiplied you the knowledge. Yeah. So to unwrap the gift, yeah. we have to have the knowledge of Jesus, who he is and yeah. what he does. Amen. Amen. So then it says, the knowledge, then it goes on to say that through the knowledge. So through means in relation to. Okay? Through means in relation to. Say that. Through, through means in, in relation, relation to. to. So in relation to the knowledge that wow. you have of Jesus, wow. that's the benefits you can receive. Wow. So if you don't have the knowledge of Jesus, you're not going to be able to receive the wow. benefits. Amen? So through the relationship to the knowledge that we have of Jesus Christ, we will be able to receive all the benefits that God has given us. And then it says, all things pertaining to life and godliness. How many things? All things. How many things? All things. Just a few things? All, all things. All things. So all things means what? Everything. 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 Whether it's spiritual, whether it's physical, whether it's mental, whether it's financial, whether it's emotional, whether it's relational. All things pertaining to life and godliness. Yeah. So if you, through the knowledge of him, the ultimate gift, which is Jesus Christ, we are able to receive the gift. So Jesus was the ultimate sacrifice. And through that relationship, we can walk in the glory and virtue. So through that relationship is how we do not live a defeated life. Right. Right. So if you don't have the relationship, wow. if you don't have the knowledge, wow. nine times out of ten, you're going to be saved. Mm -hmm. You're going to heaven, but you will live a defeated life. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Wow. Because y'all yeah. just looking at me like that and y'all paying attention. No, we paying attention. It's good. Yeah. It's good. It's good. So, y'all should see y'all faces. I need to pull my camera up. Okay. <laughs> you will live a defeated life. Now, don't get me wrong. You can go to church every Sunday and still live a defeated life. Yeah. yeah. You can be on the praise and worship team, the usher boy, the deacon, or you can be a pastor. And still yeah. live a defeated life. Mm -hmm. So, it's not about the time. At all. According to this scripture, it says through the what? Through the knowledge of Jesus. Yeah. That's how we live a victorious life. Good. See, what had happened was there was a divine exchange on the cross. All right? There was a divine exchange on the cross. So when God the Father sent Jesus the Son and he died on the cross for us, the exchange was he became everything that was a curse. So we can walk, hallelujah, and everything that's a blessing. Yeah. Give it up for Jesus right there. That's a good place to pray. Yeah. He became sin. He became lust. He became death. He became everything yeah. that was a curse. So okay. we can walk in everything that is a blessing. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. So that was the divine exchange. Yeah. So the way the kingdom works, there's divine exchanges that are taking place. So as Jesus was the ultimate divine exchange, we were able to receive everything that God had in store for us. Amen? Amen. I want to do a demonstration. I need somebody stand over here and somebody stand over here. Just two people. One on this side. We're going to do an impromptu. One on this side. So then Jesus comes knocking at the door. Somebody answers the door and they receive the gifts of Jesus. Jesus came knocking at the door. Now 
They never answered the door. They never received the wow. gift of Jesus Christ. Wow. So then Jesus just don't give up. He come back again. He come back again. She finally answers the door. She saved, hallelujah. So she took a minute to get saved. But she accepts Jesus Christ right away. Amen? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they both have the gift. Right. All right? So then she just holding on to the gift. Just wow. holding on to it. She said, this person right here begins to unwrap the gift. Yeah. She begins to unwrap the gift and find out what's inside. Ain't nothing in there but you. Right. <laughs> and find you out <laughs> what's inside. So then what's inside of the gift is the promises of God. It's the blessings of Abraham. Yeah. It's holy. Yeah. It's everything that we need. Amen. Yeah. There you go. It's healing in there. Yeah. It's deliverance in there. Yeah. It's victory in there. Yeah. We are the head and not the tail in there. Yeah. We are the above and not beneath yeah. in there. Everything that Jesus said we can have is in there. Amen. Yeah. So now this person begins to walk and everything that God said that we can have. Now this person, you still look, this person is just saved. So yeah. hell and high water come knocking at their door. Lord. They going through all kind of stuff. <laughs> they depressed all the time. They worried. They sick. But are they saved? Yes. yes. So according to the scriptures, they're saved. Amen. Yeah. But this person took the time. Come on, come on. To unwrap the gift and receive everything that God said we can. For the divine exchange. So when the divine exchange had taken place, the blood of Jesus canceled. Say cancel. Cancel. Every generational curse. Yeah. The blood of Jesus canceled every generational curse. But you can be saved and still over here walking in those generational curses if you don't take the time yep. to unwrap the gift. That's good. And see what's on the inside. How do you see what's on the inside? Through the knowledge of of Jesus. So once we get the knowledge of him, we understand what it is that he died for. We understand what the promises are. I've been talking to people, I'm like, they say, I'm like, you know what the promises of Abraham are? They're like, cricket, 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 cricket. The Bible said that we can have the promises of Abraham. So I am the promises of Abraham. The promises of Abraham are mine. What are the promises of Abraham? So when we take the time to wow. unwrap the gift, we find out what those blessings of Abraham are. Right. We find out what God says that we can have. Amen? Amen. We must understand through the relationship that we are determined to walk in, in the gift that God has given us, which is Jesus Christ, his son. Right. Salvation. Salvation means to be saved, to be healed, to recover from all fatalities. Mm. Salvation means to be saved, to be healed, to recover from all fatalities. And I would say that generational curses is fatalities. Uh -huh. So salvation covered that, but if we don't take the time to unwrap the That's gift, right. we'll never walk in the benefits that salvation has already covered. Right. So I'm gonna call out some generational curses, and you write down your own personal generational curses, because we're gonna denounce them today. Amen. 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 So poverty, poverty is a generational yes, curse. Sure is. Possessiveness is a generational curse. Sexual sins, mental illness, substance abuse, physical disease, emotional illness, occult environments, wow. involvement, fears, anxiety, anger, all of them are generational curse. And under each label is other categories that fall under that. And I'm gonna teach that later. But today I just wanna lay a foundation for generational curses and what they are so we can be aware of them and denounce them in our life, amen? Yeah. The gift covers them all. In Galatians 3, 13 and 14, it says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, having become a curse for us, yeah. For it is written, curses everyone who hangs on a tree, that the blessings of Abraham might come upon the Gentiles in Christ, mm -hmm. that we may receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. Amen? Amen? So when the blessings of Abraham come upon us as the Gentiles, we receive everything that the Scripture said that we can have. Amen? Wow. Yeah. 
So Christ became a curse so that we can walk in his blessings. So what God gave us is called grace. Say grace. 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 And the acronym, acronym that I found for grace is God's riches at Christ's expense. Amen. God's riches at Christ's expense. So now that we understand that the ultimate gift is Jesus Christ, and we have to unwrap that gift to receive yeah. everything that God has for us, now we can walk into the supernatural gifts that the Holy Spirit has promised us. Amen? Amen. So today I want to talk about the gifts that do something. Say the gifts, the gifts that, do something. that do something. So the first gift that does something is the gift of faith. So when we talk about the gifts of faith, that means that your faith is so strong in God that it moves God's hand towards wow. any situation wow. or circumstance that you may have yeah. going on. Yeah. That's a gift of faith. Yeah. And the gift of faith is a supernatural gift. Amen? Amen? All the gifts of the Spirit are supernatural gifts. So when we talk about faith, there's several different kinds of faith. So I think I'm going to go over three of them, four of them with y'all today. So the gift of faith is a supernatural ability to believe God without human doubt or unbelief or unreasoning. So you don't have to reason it. You don't got to figure out how it's going to happen, what it's going to do. You just got faith in God and it manifests. Amen? Yeah. So that's called a miracle. Say right. miracle. Miracle. So a miracle. So when we talk about miracles, the next gift is the gift of miracles. But the gift of faith is a miracle as well. So when we talk about the gift of faith, you receive. The gift of faith is a passive uh -huh. um, action. So you just have to receive it. Amen? We say receive, receive the gift of faith. The gift of faith. So then when we talk about the gift of miracles, then you don't receive it, you act on it. Mm. Amen. So that's a active, it does. The gift of miracles does something and it's active. The gift of faith receives something and it's passive. All right. So the miracle is the supernatural power to intervene in the ordinary, ordinary course of nature and counteracts natural and scientific law. So that is a miracle. Mm -hmm. I'm going to say it again. It is a supernatural power intervening in order to change the course, whether wow. it's natural or scientifically. Wow. That's a miracle. Wow. So when things happen yeah. that you cannot understand, explain, yeah. and there's no reason for it, that's a miracle. Amen? Amen? So then we go into the gift of faith. There is several different gifts. So first there's the saving faith. Right. Saving faith. Say saving faith. Saving faith. Which is Ephesians 2 and 8. For by grace you have been saved through faith and not of yourself, but it is a gift of God. Right. So that is saving faith. Next, there's general faith. Say general faith. General faith. Which is Romans 12, 2, 12, 3 and 3. For I say, through the grace that has been given to everyone who is among you, not to think more highly of yourself than you ought to, but to think soberly. For God has dealt each and every one of you a measure of faith. Yeah. So that's general faith. We all have a measure of faith. That means we all have the ability to believe God for whatever it is that right. we're believing him for. Right. But with that measure of faith, if you never exercise it, It'll never manifest never, in your life. Never. So just like working out. When you work out, can you pick up 100 pounds like the first day you Absolutely have? not. So then once you start picking it up and you build up Curry. that muscle, <laughs> then you can go to higher weights. The same thing with your general faith. Once you believe God for some dish rags, okay? <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. yeah. 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 That's, that's yeah. real. That's real. Yeah. Then he manifests somebody knock at your door. Knock, knock, knock. I had bought some extra dish rags. And I'm like, oh, you be so thankful. Then you believe God for a new dress. You go window shopping, you just looking around the store, and then somebody yeah. says, I want to bless you and buy you a dress. Like, okay. Then you start believing God for a car, yeah. and you believe him for a house, or what have you. But you got to yeah. start somewhere, yeah. and then he'll manifest. I remember when I first got saved, I was riding around. I'm like, okay, Lord, I want to park his face close to the door. <laughs> <laughs> you pull in, somebody start pulling out. I'm like, yes, thank you. Thank you, Lord. So it, it just starts off small and then it builds up, right? Yeah. And then there is faith, the fruit of faithfulness. That's in Galatians 5 and 22. It says, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, kindness, goodness, and faithfulness. So in the fruit of faithfulness, it means that the Holy Spirit empowers you to be faithful no matter what the wow. situation, no and matter what good. the circumstance. Yeah. 
So that's an empowerment of the Holy Spirit right. to be faithful. Amen. Right. So that is a supernatural gift that yeah. God has given you because it's not natural just to be faithful. Right. It has to be a supernatural gift. So when you walk in the supernatural gift of faithfulness, it doesn't matter what goes on. Wow. So if somebody hurts your feelings at church, still you still come back to church. Yeah. 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 If somebody do something to you, you still show up. Come on. If your wife make you mad, you don't go out and cheat on her. You still be faithful. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Something happened, you don't get mad at God. You still be faithful to what it is that he has called you to do. Yeah. So that's a gift of faithfulness. Wow. Amen? So we have different gifts that we walk in as it relates to faith. Amen? So then the next gift is the work. Let me make sure I went over everything. Okay, let's give you some about, um, examples in the Bible about faithfulness. So in Daniel and the lion's den, that was a gift of faith, right? When he went to the lion's den, supernaturally, God closed the mouths of the lion. So he was able to be down there. The king was scared because he was in there. He was like, oh. So then the next morning, the king came down there. Hey, Daniel, you still in there? He was like, yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and the king was like, all right, because he really didn't want it to happen, right? right, right, right. Another gift of faithfulness is Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, right? Yeah. So when they said that they were going to throw them into the fiery furnace, they was like, you're going to have to bow down. They was like, we ain't bowing down. They was like, you know what? Even if God don't deliver us, wow. we not going to bow down right. to what you're talking about. Right. So then when they put them in there, they didn't even get smell like smoke. They didn't get singed or anything. That was their faith in right. action. A supernatural miracle had taken place that they didn't give birth. That man. Right. Another um, 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 gift of faith, Elisha. Mm. Elisha, God told him to go sit by the brook. Uh-huh. And he said that the ravens were yeah. going to feed him. Yeah. So God supernaturally sustained him mm-hmm. through ravens. So that was his faith in action. So with all of the faith gifts, you just have to receive it. Say, I receive it. I receive it. Say, I receive it. I receive it. It has something on your mind. Yeah. Yeah, Think yeah, about yeah. something right yeah. now. Right now. For yeah, real. Yeah. And then put your hands on and say, Lord, Lord I receive it. I receive so by it. faith, he's going to give you that Woo. thing that you receive. gift of faith is, and it happens in the Bible, is um, people get raised from the dead. Right. Through faith. Yeah. It was a story in my family. My uncle, he was a preacher. Yep. And I want to say he was like a sanctified, I don't know, but they was one of the ones that hats and wore them doilies on their head. Yeah. So, <laughs> uncle, he was a preacher, and this man had died. So they had called him when the man had died, and he was on his way there. And when he got there, the man was already dead. But Uncle Hugh didn't know that the man was already dead. And then he went in there, and he prayed for the man, and the man came back to life. Yeah. So when I would hear that story about my Uncle Hugh, I used to be like, that's an urban legend. <laughs> but come to find out it was true. It was true. He went in there, he prayed for that man, and he came back to life. I believe that generational blessing yeah. is on my life. It's in my blood. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. So next is the gift of miracles. The gift of the working of miracles. So a supernatural power intervening in ordinary course of nature and to counteract natural and scientific laws. A gift of miracle, it does, is active. Amen. Yeah. So when Jesus turned the water into wine, yeah. it was a gift of miracles. Right. It was active. And so when you work a gift of miracles, that means you have to do something for it to manifest. I like that. Okay, for faith, you just receive it. Right. But for a gift of miracles, the working wow. of miracles, is something that you have to do to make that miracle manifest. Yeah. Say, I got to. I got to. Do something. Do something. You got to do something for the gift of miracles yeah. to happen. So after Jesus, what did he do when he turned the um, water into wine? His mama came over there. She was like, they ain't got no wine. He was like, what did that do with me? <laughs> she was like, um, and she told his disciples, whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. Do it. Yeah. So he had to do something. He had to tell them to go get it. So he went and got the water. They went and got the water pot, yeah. poured it out, served the wine. The people was amazed. They was like, oh, you saved the good wine for last. That was a miracle, amen? Wow. So he had to do something to make that miracle manifest. Wow. Wow. And then the last one for the gift of miracles, um, Elijah, okay. Uh, no, Peter. Peter was walking on water. Yeah. That was a miracle. Uh-huh. So Peter had to do something to 
take part in the miracle of walking on water. So when he was in the boat, the winds and the waves was going on, he was standing there, Jesus told him to come. He could have just stood there. So when Jesus told him to come, he started walking out on the water. And he walked on the word that God has given him. That's yep. a revelation in that. But I don't have time to really unfold it, unfold it, unfold it. But he walked out on what? He walked out on the word of God. The C O M E. When he told him to come, he came. That was the word of God. So we can walk out, hallelujah, everything that the scripture says that we can have if we walk out the knowledge of the gift that God has given us. Amen. And then another miracle was Elijah when he told the woman to bake a cake for her, him first. Mm -hmm. Now, man, there was a famine in the land. Y'all know what a famine is? Mm -hmm. Ain't no food. Yeah. Ain't no food nowhere. Right. Okay, Costco's closed, save a lot, ain't got nothing, EBT card ain't coming. You won't have no food. Yeah. None. It's a right. famine in the land. So while the famine in the land was going on, God told Elijah to go see the widow woman, yeah. and she was going to sustain him while right. he was there. So he shows up. She there. She putting all her little stuff together. I got a cup of cornmeal. I got a cup of flour. I got a little bit of sugar. I'm about to make this cake. Me and my baby going to eat it, and we're going to die. So then Elijah shows up, and he was like, I need you to make a cake for me first. So she had to do something. In order for the miracle to take place. If you want a miracle to take place in your life, you gotta do something. Hallelujah! You gotta do something. So after the miracle, after the gift of um, miracles, it's active. That means you have to do something. You have to step out on the word that you heard. You have to believe it. It's something that you have to do. Okay, for the gift of faith, you can just sit there passive and say, Lord, I believe that this will happen. Yes. And then the manifestation can take place. But for a miracle, you have to do something. Amen? Hallelujah. And then the last one is the um, the gift of healing. Say, gift of, gift of healing. healing. So the gift of healing, all manner of sickness by supernatural power without human aid or medicine. Wow. So when God heals you, it's supernatural. When God heals you, it's supernatural. So according to the scripture, it says, How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, that who went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God saw with him. So Jesus went about healing all who was oppressed. How many did he heal? All. That means what? Everybody. He healed everybody that was oppressed. So sometimes we, um, the first thing that we want to do is go to the doctor. But as Christians, the first thing that we should do is seek God. Yeah. See God and see what God is going to do and see what God wants yeah. to do. Go back to that faith. If you have the faith, then you seek God and wow. see what he's going to do. Right. And don't be stupid. If it don't happen, go to the doctor. Period. <laughs> go to the doctor. So sometimes God can use the doctors to help you get what it is that you need. Amen? So in the gift of healing, certain people can have certain gifts for certain things. Because it says the gifts are in the body and different diversities of the same gift. So with the gift, um, somebody can have the gift to pray for you and your head and go away. Okay? Um, Sister Sharon can have the gift to pray for you and your back stop hurting. Somebody else can have a gift to pray for you and diabetes fall off. So you can have different gifts, but God can use anybody at any given time, any way he wants to, to help you to be healed. Amen. Am I making sense? Yep. Amen. So when we walk in the gift of healing, sometimes it can just be a blanket statement. We can pray. Everybody can heal. Any infirmities that you have, they'll fall off. Other times there's an unction to call out certain things and people will be healed. Amen. Today we call it out generational curses. Amen. Generational According to the scripture, the gifts are to continue to work through the followers of Jesus Christ until Christ returns. Yes. I'm going to repeat that again. According to the scriptures, the gifts of the Spirit are to continue to work through the followers of Jesus Christ until Christ returns. Yes. How long are these gifts going to work? Until Christ returns. How long are these gifts going to work? Until Christ returns. So if you want to operate in these gifts, the only thing you have to do is ask God wow. for the gifts. Amen? Wow. Ask God to help you or 
going to bless you with the anointing to be able to walk in these gifts. According to what I had taught y'all, Jesus came so the works of the enemy could be defied. Wow. Amen. He came so you could walk in generational blessings. Right. The only thing you have to do is unwrap the gift wow. and receive everything that God said you can have. Amen. 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 So at this time, I just want to do a, a little exercise where we're all going to denounce things that are in our life. So what happens is when we have generational curses, the first thing that you want to do is acknowledge yeah. that there is a curse. Right. Okay. Write that down. Acknowledge there is a curse. Because sometimes, some of this y'all going to do at home. Y'all going to do it right here, but we're just going to go over one thing. Y'all going to go over every generational curse that's in your life, and you're going to denounce it when you get home. So you want to acknowledge that there was a curse in your life. Yeah. After you acknowledge it, then you want to denounce it. Yeah. You want to denounce the lies that the enemy had told you. Mm -hmm. After you denounce it, you want to replace it with the word of God. You want to say something as it relates to that thing that you want, that you expect. Remember, I said that we give it, uh, we bind and loose by the words that we say. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the first thing that we want to do is what? Acknowledge. The second thing we want to do is what? Yeah. And the third thing we want to do? Replace, Replace it with God. the word of God. So let's say um, somebody said, I can't, you can't do nothing right. You can't do nothing right is a word curse. Right. It's a word curse. Yes. You just like your daddy. If your daddy wasn't no good, that's a word curse. Yeah. You stupid, that's a word curse. Mm. I, I don't understand how people even be saying that stuff. We be at work and somebody be like, I'm so stupid, I'm so ignorant. I'm like, why would you say that? You know, but you just don't know better. Why would you say anything negative about yourself? I mean, the world says nothing negative things about, why would you open up your mouth and say something negative about yourself? Really? If you do, stop it today. Stop it. Amen. So what you want to do, if it's something you said, I can't do anything right, that's an example. So then after that, you um, find a scripture that goes along with that to denounce it. So I can't do anything right. It's a word curse that I've been saying. I'm, I'm acknowledging it. I've been saying negative things about myself. I'm, yeah. I'm acknowledging it. Yeah. So then I denounce it. I denounce that. I can do things right. Okay? I'm smart. I have the mind of Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you find a scripture that will back it up. So I found Philippians 2 and 13. It says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And then I declare what I can do. Therefore, I declare that I can do anything that is the will of God and I can do it with excellence. Wow. Amen? Yeah. Amen. Let's go through that exercise with that. Even if there's something that you haven't denounced, just think about something that you've done and then we're going to denounce it right now. So right now you say a word curse. A word curse. Is I can't do anything right. I can't do anything right. So I'm denouncing that. I'm denouncing that. And I'm replacing it. And I'm replacing it. With the word of God. With the word of God. Say I can. I can. Do all things. Do all things. Through Christ. Through Christ. Who strengthens me. Who strengthens me. Therefore. Therefore. I declare. I declare. I can do. I can do. The will of God. The will of God. With excellence. With excellence. So are we clear on how you. Yeah. So that's the knowledge of him when we unwrap like the gift. That. So when we unwrap the gift, we get a greater understanding of yeah. how we can walk in the blessings of God. So we just bind it up a curse yeah. of yeah. the yeah. enemy, yeah. and we just release a blessing. Amen? Right. Is that simple enough? Yeah. Y'all okay? Yeah. Yeah. Give it up for Jesus. Clap your hands. Clap your hands. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So at this time, I want you to have a generational curse on your mind. And we're going to bind them, but we're going to agree with you in prayer. So what happens when we agree with you in prayer? You have the prayer.